All right, you two, welcome back to Cert Junkie. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about Ansible, how to configure your servers and your networking devices. Um, you probably already done some research, with, and that's probably what has brought you to my channel. Um, Ansible is a great tool for automation and managing your fleets, um, be it servers or uh, networking devices. Um, you can do cool things like schedule crimes on multiple devices to just doing regular continuous updates of your devices. Um, you can also gather facts on your devices and get resources from using system commands. So I'm actually using CentOS 7 right now. Um, and I'm just gonna use the Yum Package Manager and install it. It's a pretty simple ins install, pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and do that. It also helps if you're in the the right window when you you go to start uh, installing the application. And you're gonna just hit yes. And voila, you're in business. So now all you have to do is two two things right off the back. You have to configure the host files and create a YAML file to use. All right, and we're gonna do both of those right now. We're gonna create a host file, and we're just gonna create a solved YAML file. So ed Etsy Ansible, and you can also the cool thing about Ansible too is you don't have to just use the default setting. You can um, set your config and your directory structure however you choose um, so it's pretty flexible about that you just have to let it know where to find your actual host files and the YAML files that you're actually trying to use all right let's open the default host file all right default in the default host file you'll see some comments saying comments begin with a hashtag or pound character just like any other scripting or programming language bank lines are ignored so it handles spaces for you groups of hosts are delimited by a bracket and then some type of title where the header is and then a closed bracket you can enter host names or ip addresses a host name or ip can be a member of multiple groups so for example if you have um, an enterprise fleet that needs all the updates to maintain um, the level of security on your network then everything would probably be a part of that group. But then if you have some type of HR specific applications for other servers, then you would just place the HR servers in a different group, right? So they would then be a part of both groups so that they can get both updates. All right, we're gonna delete all of this in here because we really don't need it. All right, and then I'm going to modify this web server groups and call it a test group. Test. And we're going to get rid of these few lines here. Now I kind of use the first three octets. And you can also summarize your devices by doing a bracket and a range of, let's we'll say, 250. That's how you can summarize your routes and uh, not have to type them all out, but just for the, to be explicit so everyone can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna write them all out. All right, those are two IP addresses that I have servers. And right here you can see how they already have another default group called DB servers. You can use the host name or you can use the IPs under the group names and that's it. It's, it's a pretty straightforward process. Let's go ahead and delete it. And then it has that, that host range. And I told you the wrong thing. I put dash but it's actually a colon here summarize the numbers you know, 
we're out of there. All right. We should be able to run. Let's pull this down. See, I put the host file, it's test. All right. So there we go. I had the test group in the wrong spot, but it'll be Ansible. Then your group from the host files, then the ping command. And don't do this in the future. I'm just using root for tutorial purposes. Good. So. Both of these failed basically because I have to actually SSH into them one time to initiate the. Or you can just deploy your keys and you don't have to use user accounts at all. So the first one was successful, the other one was unreachable, failed to connect the host via SSH. All right, when we come back to the next video, we're gonna do a full out YAML file.